Welcome to the Block 20 Report coverage of the Blockchain Global Expo. I'm your host, Krypta, and I'm here with Javid Kutak, the CFO of Humanic. So how are you finding the exhibition so um, been a long day, but very fantastic. Seeing a, a, a huge mix of people, uh, very enjoyable to, to see such a diverse crowd coming together um, in one place to further technology and some of the objectives behind it are very touching and similar to Humanic. So met some really exciting people. That sounds amazing to me. Um, so as I understand that Humanic is, a very, is very active in Africa and could you outline the work that you have accomplished there so far? As you may know, we did the ICO last year. We raised around $5.2 million. Um, since then, towards the end of last year, we launched our uh, first pilot app within Africa. Uh, we did our initial pilot with 2,000 people uh, working with a local charity. And uh, we, we, we received that feedback and based on that feedback, refine the app and so on. And from there on, we haven't stopped. We have continued to grow. Uh, we have already established ourselves in, uh, in, in uh, around five or five plus countries. And towards the end of this year, we're, we're targeting 10. Um, we've already reached 100,000 plus downloads as well. Um, so, so I think there's a lot of um, fantastic response, uh, but, but we're working with the local uh, various local ambassadors, local people and looking for local partnerships to make sure that we understand the market, we understand their issues and we are able to use technology to, to solve them because um, technology and the blockchain and the biometric ID that Humanic app provides or is based on, that's only one part of the issue or one part of the puzzle that needs to be solved. So. Um, and, and in a similar fashion, we're sort of scaling up one country at a time. That's amazing. Um, so Africa must be a developer's paradise, really, uh, due to the lack of oversight and regulation. And has this aided your mission in banking the unbanked there? So from our perspective, our, our focus is on trying to, like you know, like probably everybody knows, you know, bank the unbanked. Um, and we're trying to um, scale this in the future globally. Starting with Africa, you're absolutely right that potentially from a regulatory perspective, in certain countries it's a little bit um, less regulated compared to some of the Western countries, um, but that doesn't mean that regulations do not exist. So um, as we speak, we are continuously working with local law firms in all the countries that we've launched our apps to make sure that we understand the local regulations, uh, make sure that we're regulatory compliant, um, as well as to um, make sure that when we're sort of, you know, kind of providing these solutions, um, there's no, um, there's no lashback. Um, and I think working with um, the, the law firms that I just mentioned, Alongside, we're also trying to start conversations with um, sort of either the local regulatory bodies where they're available or central banks. Um, again, with the same focus to make sure that from a regulatory perspective we're complying, but at the same time, um, if you've got support of those organizations, then you, it, it, it becomes a lot easier for you to achieve your objective, essentially. And another question. Uh, what is your next move in Africa to increase the, uh, the reach of your services to aid yet more of the unbanked? So we've got, I think there's a few different ways we're trying to target that. Um, first and foremost, within our app, we essentially end up having um, bonus tokens for various positive user behaviors. So for example, if a person downloads the app and they end up um, um, signing up to the app using our biometric ID. When they do that, they'll get a certain number of bonus HMQ tokens. Um, similarly, if they introduce their family and friends and they sign up to the app, they'll get bonus HMQ tokens. Regular use of H you know, the app would also give you the bonuses and so on and so forth. Um, just to be clear, um, for, for, those of you don't who, for those of you who don't know, 
The HMQ token is our cryptocurrency. So that is essentially the underlying currency that the app uses to send and receive money. Um, so giving those bonuses ensures that people end up using the app on a regular basis, but at the same time, um, get others, friends and family to uh, benefit from using the app. Uh, another feature we've got built in is um, a chat feature, where, which is similar like WhatsApp. So anybody, any, any, anybody else in your address book essentially can, you can chat with them through the app and send and receive money directly through the chat app as well. Um, so I think those two would help in achieving that objective. Then like I mentioned earlier, we're working with local ambassadors, uh, sort of local marketing to educate people in terms of the benefits and so on. So those things combined hopefully will you know, help us continue uh, expand. Perfect. Um, so how does Humana get around the fact that many people in Africa, as we know, don't have mobile devices or don't even have an internet connection? How do you deal with that? So I think there's two parts to that um, answer. One, we did some uh, on the ground research. We hired an external agency to actually do that for us. Um, from what I can remember, um, the outcome of that research were quite positive that actually a very high percentage, if I'm not wrong, we're talking more than 80%, um, already has access to some sort of a smartphone and a data connection. Might be 2G, might be 3G, or et cetera. Um, so, so that kind of shows that the unbanked population of the world, two billion, um, they, they do have access to smartphones. My background originally is from Pakistan. So there I could see the same kind of thing that four years ago you would, you would we started seeing smartphones penetrating uh, sort of, we've got again a large unbanked population there as well. So you, you started seeing that penetration, but there was no data connections. Now, uh, three, four years down the line, we've got, once we've got 4G available, um, an average person can afford that you know, data connection. So I think whilst we have a high uh, penetration of the technology, i.e. smartphones and, and uh, data, um, even if we didn't, and let's assume the worst case scenario that only 10% people have access currently to smartphones and data connections, 2 billion, 10%, if we achieve that success, that's still you know, huge. And hopefully in a few years down the line, um, whatever market is not captured by this uh, smartphones and data, it would you know, kind of catch up. And hopefully we'll be in a fantastic position to capture them as well at that point in time. We do know that TNG has some amazing high tech and no tech combo solutions. And we would love to get you in touch with Alex Kong from that project. How do you feel about that? Um, I think that's fantastic. Um, our personal um, approach has been that the unbanked population, this particular um, issue and this particular market, both are huge. And our approach has been and is going to be that it is better to partner, collaborate, work together to uh, serve humanity and solve this problem. Um, and I think that is how we've got a bigger chance and a better chance to actually achieve that. So we'd be very happy with that and look forward to it. Perfect. <laughs> and so what is in store for the future of Humanic? How would it develop in the next couple of years? Um, I think we've got a particular roadmap. Um, so later this year, we're targeting, like I mentioned earlier, expanding into different African countries. Um, by the end of this year, we're also planning on launching. We've got some ambitious target, but realistically, at the very least, if we launch three to five services on our platform, which, we, which would be on top of the um, just sending and receiving payments. So these services, examples can include microloans, um, insurance, uh, health tech, education, etc., being offered on top of our platform. So we're, we're, we're planning to launch a few of those by the end of this year as well. And then next year, we plan to continue expanding into other countries outside of Africa as well, and continue to offer more, more services from the financial inclusion perspective. Um, and whilst doing all that, make sure that we keep in touch with our community, with our users, keep taking their feedback, and where needed for different uh, countries and markets, changing sort of the UI uh, uh, language, uh, the artificial intelligence bot that we've got in there to answer their questions and so on. So essentially, 
keep on moving towards success. And, uh, well, a last as well. Is there anything else that you would want to let the viewers know right here, right now about Humanic? Anything that's essential? Um, I think the key thing for me would be that if you believe in the vision of Humanic, then support us in whatever way you can. Uh, whether that is if you are based in you know these African countries, try our app. Um, if you have any issues, if you have, if you find any suggestions, get in touch with our team uh, with feedback. Um, other than that, if you are active in the blockchain space or or this community or fintech, and you see a potential to collaborate or partner, like I mentioned earlier, get in touch with me or anybody from my team. Um, and I think together we can hopefully you know kind of make the world a better place thank you very much and thank you for your time this was agent crypto for the center media at the blockchain global exhibition thank you very much